Welcome to Sustainability Unleashed, the podcast where we explore the intersection between ESG and sustainability at PGS. I'm your host, Sandy Spurk, and today we'll be talking to Adrian Berkey. Adrian is an earth scientist, uh, started his career in England uh, that evolved uh, to multiple uh, leadership roles around Europe, Africa, and South America. Uh, and I believe you have to correct me here, Adrian, but I believe you've been at PGS for 28 years, and that is a milestone in itself. <laughs> <laughs> Almost 28 years, yeah. Oh, well, fantastic. Um, and today you're joining us from Rio de Janeiro as VP of Sales and Services and Managing Director, and another end also as our uh, leader for uh, one of our four deep dives that was established in 2023 called What Does Sustainability Mean for PGS? Welcome. Bon dia. Thank you. Bon dia. Or botage, I should say for you, uh, Sandy. Uh -huh. Thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll just jump right in it, uh, since uh, I would assume our listeners are curious about, you know, why why are you doing this on top of your, um, you know, normal job? <laughs> uh, so, if I could ask you, I mean, what what made you raise your hand in in taking this additional responsibility? Being with the company for such a long time, of, of working in various areas and and uh, with our offshore crews, etc. I know we do an awful lot uh, behind the scenes just in our everyday uh, work that, that that speaks to sustainability, that speaks to some of the goals that you set. I felt very strongly that we should be highlighting this. We, you know, we are already doing a lot of things that we don't talk about. Uh, we, we do it because it's the right thing to do. Uh, we do it because it's uh, we're required to do it. But, um, you know, actually shouting and, and being and showcasing that I should say I thought was quite important so when the opportunity came up to uh, to help with the the network I, I jumped in with both feet and and then with the the deep dives that, that came uh, shortly afterwards it was um, yeah quite happy to to lead this so like I said I feel quite strongly about it you know we, we we're already doing a lot of good things yeah and, and that's the the last point that I think is fantastic that um, you know as as a I would still call myself a newbie compared to uh, <laughs> the time you've been at PGS. But one of the things that attracted me uh, to PGS, looking at all the things that, that we're actually doing, we just haven't put it within the framework of uh, sustainability. And I'm sure a lot of companies are in the same uh, position. So for us to be able to structure it that way has been uh, and is still a journey, uh, but at least has given us a, a very good um, uh, baseline uh, to work from. Um, but I'm also curious about, you know, what, what expectations did you have for yourself, right? Because it must have been a bit jumping into the unknown. We hadn't done this before, but you said, okay, we'll, we'll have a go at it. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the expectations you had for yourself uh, and uh, how did those pan out now if you look uh, back? Looking back. So, so I, I guess um, when we started to look at the network, when we started to look at all of the things that, that, that we've been doing, my expectations were that I would have to do a lot more work. I'll have to be honest. I, I thought I'd have to do more um, to help bring people together, to uh, tease uh, information and stories and other things from people. I, I thought I'd have to work harder to uh, encourage people to report and write their own notices, etc., to get the message out. But what I found is, and, and this is, I think, a tribute to the uh, to the way the network's been set up. What we found was um, almost immediately the people within the network and actually outside the network started to get very involved, very engaged, very very quickly. What I found is that, uh, and what I see is that. Because, say, sustainability, because the, the things we do with the ESG, it, it crosses the entire company, all verticals, horizontals, however you want to phrase them, but, but basically all levels across the entire company. It, it, it's not business line driven as, as such. Um, so you know, there are some things, obviously, that are critical for certain business lines, but because it's across the company, this is where the network really does uh, come into its own. You've got people within an, an office speaking to somebody uh, on, on one of the vessels or the other side of the world. And ordinarily, in, in normal course of business, 
you know, those two people would not be speaking to each other. And here they're, they're, they're in work groups looking at various ways and various things. And it's brilliant to see it, 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 it actually reaches across the company, brings a lot of different, different people, lots of different ideas, perspectives, different cultures, even uh, across the globe um, together it, it, with one aim. And that's to basically to, to highlight what we're doing, um, to innovate and bring new ideas, uh, uh, ways of improving uh, what we do and um, yeah, and, and showcasing it. So uh, my expectations were for me to be working a lot harder at this, uh, but actually the network has just lifted everything up and, and, and taken it forward. So now it's more working w- with uh, certain tools to help people get the messages out. Um, you know, we've put together a few templates and, and, and whatnot for people to, to, to use and, and go from, but really it's, it has taken a life of its own. So you talked about, you know, why you, you raised your hand uh, and, and uh, willing to lead us into the unknown. Um, <laughs> and you also talked about your expectations and what you see uh, yeah. as outcomes today. Uh, and that's, that's very powerful. Um, but could you talk a little bit about the objective of the deep dive that you're leading? What does sustainability mean for PGS? What, what was the objective with the deep dive to start off? And then if you can talk about the interfaces to the other deep dives. So the idea behind this was really to understand what does sustainability mean to the company, to the people within the company. And one of the key elements there is, you know, who, who is PGS and, and PGS is its people. Um, so one of the first things that we did was uh, we, we launched a quick survey, as you normally do, um, to, um, to to canvas not just the, the people who joined up for the network, but the wider company. Just a very simple set, very simple questions if they understood where the, the goals were, et cetera, where, where, how to find the sustainability goals and to just to check awareness. And, and um, it, it was very interesting, some of the responses uh, that, that came back. The survey itself also also helped to highlight the fact that the network was there, which was also very good because I think we had some other people join after the survey. But um, uh, you know, throughout that, it, it became very clear that that people were very motivated to get involved. They they um, uh, I, I think um, over ninety percent thought that employees could make a difference within the company, which I thought was a very high number you know it wasn't just uh, people treating this as a tick box as something else they have to do they, they actually felt quite um, quite uh, passionate about it quite uh, quite motivated and even though uh, nearly 50 percent weren't quite sure what the ESG goals were or or even where to find them on the uh, on the internal website nearly a hundred percent of the people involved were willing to give it a go and, and actually get involved and that in itself just highlights the, the motivation and is certainly reflected in some of the other um, deep dives, especially the smaller actions for, for larger impacts, where very quickly a lot of people got involved and started referencing, talking to each other in different office locations, from the office to the vessel, at all sorts of levels within the company. So it's not just top-down driven. It's actually across the company rise, uh, rising things up. Well, you're bringing a, a key component there. Uh, I mean, you as a leader, uh, you know, you, you're well-respected and people listen when when you talk. Uh, but we as a, as a team, we also had the commitment from our CEO, from the executive mm. team. Would you say that that is a success criteria? Would you, would you say that yeah. people were just hungry to uh to do something uh, or yeah what, what's your view on that I, I think having the ceo and the cfo uh, and, and actually the other senior management buy into that not, not just buy into this but actually create an environment where they want people to get involved and it wasn't mandated you must get involved it was you know this is recognition that it, you know it, it's not doesn't sit within one particular business line it crosses the whole company and I think, as I said, this is where the beauty of the network comes in. The CEO is happy for you to allocate time on this because it's an important subject for the company and, and not just for environment and the social side of things, but also your know, sustainability crosses you know, into the governance side of, of how to run a company. You know, things have to be feasible and reasonable to achieve the economic value that we, that we want. And it's all, it all plays a part in, in running uh, in, in, in 
running a sustainable business. And, and this is... Yeah, uh, to your point, I mean, yeah. there are things that we were already doing. Uh, yeah. We just didn't wrap it uh, under the uh, the name of sustainability or ESG. Uh, yeah. If, if, but it sounds all very rosy. Uh, <laughs> but, but I'm very curious if there were any moments... Uh, you know, for yourself or or the group uh, within the network that you worked with, where where you guys thought, oh my goodness, how are we going to do this, right? Or it's it's been uncomfortable because I, I can't believe that it was just so easy. Uh, no, I think uh, <laughs> challenging here a bit. Yeah, I mean, did, 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 again, there's lots of ideas. I think one of the one of the things there's there's so many different ideas that come up. Some are feasible, some are not, and you know. It's, bit of time vetting and, and going through some of them to, to see what could make a difference. For, for me, it, it's okay. There's a, there's a lot of things that people want now want to talk about very openly. How on earth do we schedule that? You know, how do we, how do we schedule that? How do we, uh, how do we get that word out? Uh, you know, are, are we talking about a, a range of adverts or, or, or articles or, or, you know, th- those sorts of things. And, and, um, you know, the mind boggles as to just how many different avenues there are to to talk about these and uh, what we what we did uh, certainly we we came up with a we we had a access to a couple of tools which has certainly helped uh, that sort of reporting and uh, they've allowed people to actually schedule their own sort of uh, news if you like uh, and get that word out so that's been that's been very uh, very useful that's very interesting, I guess, to share with other companies. Because yeah. you know, depending on how you're structured as a company, you mentioned this, you know, top yeah. down or uh, networking model. But I think a lot of from from where I I stand, I I heard a lot about yeah, we want to do this, but the how, right? Yeah. So you opened that door and gave us a tool uh, where we could engage. So it it is a decentralized approach, and some would say, well, that sounds a bit risky, just allowing people to. Go in there and and share, you know, what we've done. I mean, how how did you feel about that? It, it is and it isn't, and, and and again, that's that's where I thought I'd be much more involved. Is is um, not vetting, not um, you know, it, it, with a bit of oversight on what's being reported. But I think everyone, because the network is working towards those goals, certainly on the smaller actions these are just the right things to do and basically common sense things that are being done and they're very easy to talk about they don't need someone overseeing uh, overseeing those what we did was we put together a couple of templates that that people can use uh, in their in their posts etc that i think have been widely adopted and and they relate to the un goals they relate to our own uh, corporate goals for sustainability but you know they they, they speak to Basically, the the actions of the people and of, of of the employees and and how it impacts and that all serves to help uh, showcase and, and get the word out and, and actually get more people involved. The other deep dives, are, are, as I said, they're a bit more uh, of a project. Uh, they have um, they're a little bit more constrained in in the approach because with the aim of reducing emissions for example that there is a project ongoing um, that's been ongoing for many years actually uh, and that has its own key milestone stages and uh, etc when those milestones are reached so then, moving at different speeds yeah, I guess, exactly uh, yeah would be a, a way to look at it right and and how to handle the deep dives uh, related to how quickly can we action things um, or you know some that require more anchoring across the organization. But I would also say, I mean, you mentioned the tool, um, but but it hasn't really been that easy, right? I mean, it it wasn't you saying, okay, let's uh, let's go for this tool, and there you go, right? There was actually a lot more people involved. Uh, could you share a little bit of that process so that our listeners understand this? This is it does. It's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it it, uh, it it it's not. This tool uh, allows people to to put some posts together, and then um, it uh, goes into a, a central area, and, and people are able to sort of uh, amplify that uh, uh, that message, uh, share it across all the different social network platforms, even internally within within the company. Um, we we started to put together a schedule for some of the bigger, perhaps more more substantial types of reports and how to uh, to share those for example our sustainability reports well you know there's an awful lot of work that goes into that 
there are elements in there that are very interesting, not just to our own employees, the shareholders and, and everyone, but society at large. And um, you know how to pick out pieces of information in there that certainly are worthy of, of, of talking about and showcasing to uh, the wider the wider world. And and um, you know if other companies can benefit from that, then great. You know we we do need to talk about it. So. We looked at not just one particular tool for for individual individuals to to do some posts. We're looking at uh, scheduling these bigger items, looking at, um, uh, for example, the UN days, uh, etc., and relating what we're doing to those. Hey, for the UN day on on uh, anti corruption, you know, this is our process that we have for, for that. As this is what we do, and and this is how we behave as a company, and, and you know, again, just speaks to our core values, speaks to our commitments. Uh, scheduling those sorts of things has been interesting, and then others are more reactionary of when we reach milestones within a project. But in looking back, I mean, I would say, you know, we thought, okay, we have a, a framework, and you know, you you schedule the some key UN uh, yeah. milestone or dates that that we wanted to tag on to. Um, but I would also, you know, to prompt the discussion I, for myself, it was quite helpful in that uh, we thought, okay, if we are going to talk about International Women's Day, yeah. just to you know, pick one, right? Uh, it made us look at ourselves from the outside, if that makes sense. And it made us have those discussions. Does Is that really who we are, right? Is is what we're saying true to our uh, values, true to our, our brand? So I think that exercise, in my opinion, has been very good because I, I felt that I gained confidence in what we were communicating. Absolutely. Um, what about, you know, from your perspective or your team, did you have... Uh, Similar discussions or reflections? As- yeah, I, I mean, it, it's uh, it, you've mentioned International Women's Day. Wind the clock back a few years. I don't think it was celebrated as much. And that sort of thing is worth highlighting because it does – it becomes uh, more inclusive. More employees are, are, are engaged in, in, in those sorts of things. And, and um, I think – People are more likely to get involved if they're given the space to get involved. And again, that's what this network has done. You know, this is, this is where the company believes. This is, it's not just something in the core values and written. We respect everyone and all our employees. Well, actually, yeah, we do. And, and we do. And we, we, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be just a special day. It is actually, it, it transcends across, you know, beyond those special days, uh, that are highlighted by the, by the, the UN, but the company is more than happy to promote that. It, it shows that it is very much part of core values within PGS. Yeah. And maybe on that, I think it was a little bit of an aha moment uh, for some of us, right? I mean, we, of course, we do all these yeah. things. It just hadn't been tagged as such or wrapped around that specific name. Yes. No, I, I think that's true. And, and to that as well, going uh, beyond, uh, we have uh, you know a lot of things that happen on board the vessels that uh, were just happening for years. So, say old fishing gear, etc., gets gets tangled up in our towed equipment. It has done for years since we've been operating, and um, we take that out of the the water to prevent damage, and, and we store it on board and, and dispose of it correctly on, on shore. Since 2016 is, is probably when we started recording that and actually uh, recording how much we, we remove and this sort of ghost net initiative. Since then, there's over a million kilos of uh, waste have, has been taken off our vessels. A few years ago, we, we stopped uh, purchasing uh, plastic water bottles for the, the, for the vessels and um, you know, you said using the filtered water, et cetera, et cetera, on board. And, and that's nearly 100,000 plastic bottles a year are not brought on board the vessel. That's significant, you know, and, and these things, they've just happened because it's the right thing to do. But, we, you know, actually, these are things that perhaps other companies may not have thought of. You know, those simple actions do make a difference. Um, changing all the light bulbs to LEDs. 
makes a difference on your energy consumption. As I said, there's a lot of things that have been done already that we don't know, perhaps not felt comfortable in talking about. We feel that maybe it's greenwashing or something like this. But actually, no, it's not. It's, it's something that is important because the more we do it, the better we get at it and, and the more we innovate and, and the more we improve. That's a good point that you bring up because um, at the beginning when we when we started on yeah. this journey, I felt that there was a fear, right, to communicate uh, and just being able to have those discussions and put some numbers behind and actually confirm, yes, we've done it and, you know, these are the numbers, it made us feel a lot more comfortable yeah. talking about because nobody wants to be part of, of greenwashing, but we shouldn't be ashamed of talking about what we've done. So there was this back and forth, right, until we, I guess, felt yeah. uh, confident that, you know, what we were putting out was uh, reflecting um what the company had had done, uh, so I think that in itself is a yes a milestone in itself, and I don't think we're alone there. <laughs> no, that, well, this is it. I mean, that was one of my again one of my first was okay. We we can we can put a green sticker on everything and 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 try and look uh, you know holier than thou, but but no, that's that's the wrong thing to do. You know, there are some things that are that just the, the correct. Th some things we we should be doing as part of a running a sustainable business. Some things are just not feasible, but it doesn't mean we're not a sustainable business. You know, sustainability is not just about a green sticker. It is actually having a viable business going forward and, and achieving the, the, the business aims. Um, so there are things that are feasible to do, others that, you, uh, that are just not. We, we do a lot where we can. And I think that's important. We do make a difference on on our energy consumption, on our waste, or on our recycling, etc. Et I think that's that's in the psyche of, of, of virtually every employee. You're also touching upon, a, you know, the 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 key objective with the deep dive is for us to understand what does sustainability mean to us, right? I mean, the UN has a, a fantastic uh, description of that, but it's so broad yes. that that we, you know, you had to use some time and. You know, you sent the questionnaire, but even then, right, um, we had a discussion on what are the three Ps, right? People, yeah. planet, and profit, and how do they interact, and how is that different from ESG? So just by having those discussions and maybe not expecting an answer right from the beginning, but allowing us to have that process, uh, maybe has gotten us to where we are today. I mean, what, what do you think? Uh, again, looking looking back and where we are yeah, now. Yeah. So, so the three P's are uh, you know sound like a, a sound like a business acronym, right? So they are people, profit, planet, and and uh, you know it, it sounds it, it it sounds um, too businessy. And I don't mean ESG is light and fluffy. I think ESG perhaps is framing it in a in a in a way that makes more sense to a lot more people and uh, and allows more people to actually understand what is meant by this the environment around us and and you know, working with our people and uh, you know what is a, a very important element is the governance side and and that's not spoken about very often but it is a key element to the business you know we we follow the laws we uh, follow the regulations and and the governance side also stops us from from putting those green stickers everywhere and and, and, and pretending because it you know it, that highlights the integrity of the company you know we we need to be realistic and that i think is perhaps a better frame a better framing of, uh, of of some of the things that we're doing a very good point um so so for our listeners i've been um, at least my interaction with um other sustainability professionals I've, I've gotten the feeling that there's a fear of um having to do everything right uh the first yeah. time because we're we're you know afraid of the greenwashing or um uh, being uh, deemed as as greenwashing, but what what would your ad advice be to somebody new coming into this space or somebody wanting to apply the network uh, way of uh, uh, network model way of working? I, I think have uh, have realistic goals. What I mean by that is, is that the companies had sustainability goals for some time. As I said, the survey highlighted not many people knew what they were or where they were. Half the company knew, but but not everyone did. I think setting goals that are realistic for the business, again, because this is across the company, not down every any one particular business line, having those goals allows people to set their own sort of strategies, set their own sort of uh, idea of, of how to bring it forward, of how to make it happen. And because it's company-wide, those ideas can come from, come from lots of different places. And that, that's where the network 
plays a, a big part. It allows um, those ideas to come to the surface from all parts of the company. I think the the advices have a very clear goal of what you want to achieve. What, what are the sustainability goals for your particular company? And uh, communicate those very clearly. And if if you choose the network uh, uh, option, you know, we, we've got a very large, diverse company. You know, we, we've over fifty different nationalities working for us across the globe, etc. You know, having something that's mandated by a business line becomes a tick box in, in my view, and, and it becomes something I just have to do. Now that might be suitable for certain industries to certain companies, but I, I think uh, getting, uh, I think the network has, has been a very, very positive idea because it's now allowed ownership amongst the employees um, rather than rather than just being a, a tick box. And the employees effectively are, are the ones who are running this and, and, and what have you, uh, or, or, or at least uh, all working towards those particular goals more freely than they would do with uh, with, with something that's, that's being pushed down on top of them. Very good uh, learnings to share. But to challenge you a bit, if you could redo something, if you know we went back to the start, what, what would you redo? Uh, what do you think we could have done oh, better? Oh, crikey, that's a tough one. Um, um, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I'm, what I mean by that is we, we, we've evolved and innovate so quickly. I'm not quite sure <laughs> how to answer that, if I'm honest. You know, we, we've adapted to things very quickly, especially, especially, uh, especially in the small uh, actions deep dive. Uh, I think that's been, um, that's, that is, it's different in, a, in in each location on each vessel, it, 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 you know, each society, each culture, etc. That we, that we have within the company, you know, those those small things make a difference in those locations, and they've adapted uh, very quickly. The bigger projects, I, th- I think, are working really well. Um, I don't see much to change there. F- for my deep dive, I think. Um, uh, yeah, I, I probably changed the way in which I came in, and like I said, my expectations were that I would have to, I would need to exert a bit of control, that top, that top down sort of approach. But actually, no, it, it, it's a, my perception ch- ch- did change and adapt very quickly. Just seeing how motivated other people were within the network, and and how much we were able to give them give people a lot more freedom to do that sort of reporting themselves and 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 take things on board themselves. And that you know, would I change anything? I, I I'm again, I'm not too sure of myself. I would say. I like the I like the fact that you were you used the word adaptability, uh, and for me that that also means. Uh, okay, if you fail, then fail quickly and, and learn, right? Yes. And try something new, which I think we we adapted along the way. And then it's kind of hard to go back and say, "Well, I would have done it this way," because you're adapting continuously. So that that's uh, that's really cool. Yeah, to hear. That, I mean that's the, I mean I think that's the key. You, you're not going to grow unless you uh, fail and adapt. So you, know, you you try. That, that's it. You have to try. If it doesn't work, then change, adapt. Well put. So um, I know you like a good challenge. At least I know uh, <laughs> our PGS colleagues like challenge. We like quizzes. So I have uh, three uh, questions for okay. you. Uh, and I would like you to try and answer them with five words or less. So five words or less. Answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the ambition. But again, let's see if uh, we meet our own ambition. <laughs> there you go. Comes <laughs> Leads us back to the start. Um, so, what do you think is more important, people, planet, or profit? <laughs> okay, uh, I guess that depends on who you're actually speaking to. Um, you know, that that's gonna that, that will change. There's more than five words now. Um, I would say. Uh, All right. The next yeah, one then. No, it's like, <laughs> no, I'm not passing. I, I, but but I like your point. I mean, it it is. Uh, uh, that's why sustainability is such a huge yeah. subject, right? Uh, there is many stakeholders, and depending on their needs and their perspectives, uh, you may get different uh, answers to the same problem. Well, right? and, and I was just going to say, I think if I if I had to choose one, it would be people, because without the without people, without the people engagement, you, you don't have the other two. I would agree with that. <laughs> So next question is, um, what is the biggest challenge of having one definition of sustainability? Uh, it gets pigeonholed. It gets, uh, it, it gets uh, 
put into its own silo and all of a sudden it becomes again it becomes a a, a, a task rather than uh, you know a, a thankless task rather than something that can have a uh, something that should be seen as, as a, a very positive part of running a business you know I think in fact I think it's uh, I think it's it, it does help it, businesses to um, um, to manage themselves better I think yeah. And final question. Uh, what do you think is, I mean, your personal opinion, uh, what is the biggest threat to progressing the sustainability development goals? Um, stagnation. And I think uh, not, I, I think uh, not necessarily a threat, but, but what we need to do is, is ensure that we keep momentum going. We, we sure we, we, sh- we continue to innovate and grow on the CO2, for example. We know that's – we need to show some success on that. And we are. I, I, you know, I have to say we are showing some successes and, and some movement and positive direction. And I think if we uh, if we keep that level of motivation and, and engagement of the people within the company going, uh, we, we will achieve those goals. I think with our openness and our transparency in our reporting, it is a very key element to – to uh, achieving that more than five words but then uh, sorry about that <laughs> well I, I like the word you started with which is uh, stagnation um, and that goes back to our previous discussion around adaptability um, yes but but also these three you know questions shine a light on it's not that easy to have a straight short answer for sustainability related questions because it, it depends on the context it depends on which stakeholder perspective you're yes. taking uh, so that's more of the point, not to try and challenge you to <laughs> answer quickly because I think that's a tough one. Um, but no, this is this has been really great. Uh, thank you for sharing your journey, and, and we will continue in, on this journey. Um, a pleasure. Phil, we in the podcast we've talked about you know what can be achieved um, through collaboration, uh, the importance of committed leaders, stakeholders, and not the least our sustainability ambassadors that have really been the engine that's, behind this. That's, uh, that's a great innovation was, was uh, actually uh, adding that to people's uh, um, job titles, if you like, you know, for want of a better word, you know, actually calling ourselves, it, it, it helps the again the individual take uh, take the ownership and, and take responsibility for it. I think that that's actually a, a really good, uh, a really good idea. Yeah, and that's a very good point to uh, end with. So whether you're a sustainability enthusiast, a curious mind, or just someone who loves a good podcast, this is the place to be. So remember to subscribe, follow us on LinkedIn, and join the conversation. Together, we'll unleash sustainability. Thank you. Thank you.